this video, we're going to talk about venous thromboembolism. In this video, we're going to talk about venous thromboembolisms, also known as VTEs. So, a venous thromboembolism. Let's break it down. A thromboemboli. What this is, a thrombus or an emboli is a blood clot. Thrombus meaning a blood clot that is stayed right here in a vessel. Embolism means that blood clot or that thrombus has now begun to move. Okay? And venous meaning it's in a vein. And when we're talking about VTEs, we're talking about uh, blood clots or thrombuses in the peripheral extremities. Okay? So, what are some risk factors for developing these blood clots? Um, immobility. Uh, if, if you're a patient and you're in a hospital and you're laying in bed, you're at risk for VTE. And so, uh, just because of that, almost every hospital, uh, it, it's, a, it's a code, a JACO code, uh, that you have to have some sort of prevention for venous thromboembolisms because they're that common. And so, uh, we're going to talk about this prevention just a little bit, but just being immobile, just being in a hospital, in a bed, not moving around a whole lot, puts you at risk. Others would be pregnancy and oral contraceptives because both pregnancy and oral contraceptives affect hormones and so it puts these women at uh, increased risk. And surgery, uh, especially vascular surgery because when you take two vessels and you put them back together, if there's any kind of disturbance in that flow, it puts a risk for a clot developing at that disturbance because that's where platelets like to aggregate is in, in, in disturbances. So. Signs and symptoms that a VTE has happened. Um, pain and tenderness. Um, so uh, typically one of these venous thromboembolisms might be at the, at the bend of the elbow or the bend of the knees because that's where there's a, there's a bend in the vessel and this is a tightening and so that's more likely that a thrombus would want to attach itself there. And so pain or tenderness uh, at an extremity. Okay. Sudden localized edema. So the patient may already be uh, non-pitting edema generalized all over, but out of nowhere, their their right leg is now tender behind the behind the knee, and, and that right leg is now swollen up three times the size of the left leg, and it's sudden. It's not like maybe there was an infection over a period of weeks. You know, within you see them in the morning, you come back later in the afternoon, and their leg's swollen up. There's no IV there, so it's not infiltration. Something else has caused that leg to swell up, and also you you can feel you when you're feeling around, you feel warmth, and you'll feel and you'll feel possibly a hard knot, and that may be a section of where you actually feel the thrombus itself. Uh, how do you diagnose it? Well, you look at the signs and symptoms, uh, you look at the risk factors, and then a doctor can order an ultrasound um, of, the, of the vessel, and maybe they might be able to see it, and if they can't see it, they can do an MRI or a venogram, and the venogram is just, uh, so they put some IV contrast in, so the MRI gets a better picture of the vessel. So, once you find out a patient has a venous thromboembolism, you don't want this to turn into a pulmonary embolism, which is where the thrombus in the arm uh, moves, and what it does is it goes and gets stuck in the lungs. When that happens, that is a big emergency. Uh, so let's talk about treatment. You want to go ahead and elevate the extremity, put some warm compresses on it, and that might uh, be all it needs to get the, the embolism to, or the thrombus to dissolve. Uh, you want to avoid massaging the site because that may break it loose and cause it to move to the lungs. Uh, if it's severe enough and the patient's at high enough risk, then they may put an IVC filter in, which is going to keep it to where if it does break loose, it gets stuck in the filter instead of going straight to the patient's lungs. Um, in some cases, they may do thrombolytic therapy, which may be um, an, a heparin drip or some other medicine to uh, help break it up. So let's talk about prevention. Like I told you, in, a, in every hospital, you have to have some sort of charted prevention. And sometimes, if the patient's able to get up and move, just saying, hey, we're ambulating the patient at least so many hours a day. That could be uh, all it needs. But sometimes you'll see medications such as heparin uh, or Lovenox, which Lovenox is just a fancy form of heparin. So this is a blood thinner that's going to keep the blood nice and loose and moving around. Uh, and this uh, Lovenox is typically given once a day. Heparin can be given every eight hours. Another would be uh, medication. If the patient's on like warfarin or Eliquis, that may be fine just on its own, and they can just continue their home medicine. And the other would be SCDs, which is a sequential compression device, which is a machine that pumps air around the legs and makes the blood flow. Or TED hose, which is just tights, which just give the vessels better um, contractility and love the blood flow. So this is a venous thromboembolism. And in another video, I'll talk more about pulmonary embolism.